Hi, this is Arsenio from CMI High Tech, and I'm here today to show you the brand new nano controllers from Korg. Now, there are two in the range. We have on the top here the Nano Control Studio, and on the bottom, the Nano Key Studio. Now, the Nano Control Studio, as you can see, is designed to control your digital audio workstation, your door. Uh, today, here I have it set up here with Ableton Live, and as you can see, it has all the things that you'd expect from a, a door controller. You have your transport section here, uh, you know, that allows you to cycle through a loop, set markers, play, pause, record, etc. Now, the jog wheel here has a different functionality depending on which screen you're in in Ableton Live. So, for example, here in the session view, it allows you to scroll up and down between the scenes. Then, of course, play will then launch any clips, uh, you know, that are currently active. Uh, so it doesn't have any clip launching. You'll need a separate controller for that. Now, if you jog, uh, sorry, if you tab across to the arrange view, okay, let's select here. Um, the jog wheel will allow to allow you to scrub through the timeline. You know, allow you to find the point where, for example, if you need to record in a vocal or a guitar line that to, to drop in, punch in and out, the, the jog wheel will allow you to do that. So let's go back to the session view. Now, uh, we have eight channel strips, so you can control, you know, uh, a bank of, uh, you know, eight channels. And each of the channel strips has what you would expect. You have mute, solo, record, um, and the select button. Now the select button basically allows you to highlight specific channels. Um, and I find this really useful for focusing on that channel and what I'm doing. Below that is the pan button. So just be able to pan left and right. Um, and then of course you have the faders which allow you to control volume or input volume depending on how you have your channel assigned. Now one thing to note with the Nano Control Studio is that when you move the fader, it highlights it that you've selected it in the uh, software, um, in this case Ableton Live. So moving the fader is pretty much the same as hitting you know, the select button for that channel. Um, you know, your preference will vary. Uh, I would say try it out and see what works for you. So, you know, that pretty much explains another control studio. It's, uh, you know, it does what it says on the box. Now, one thing that these two both have in common is that they're either powered by USB. As you can see, now the controller here is plugged into the computer uh, by this uh, micro USB cable here. And this LED is white, show you that that's being powered off uh, USB. Now the NanoKey Studio here, its LED is glowing blue, which means it's being powered by batteries in the back here. So I'll just open this up. So two AAA batteries. And um, yeah, it's paired to my iPad here, which is running uh, Korg's gadget app. And best way to show how this works is actually to show you um, with this uh, Phoenix plugin or Phoenix app that I have here. As you would expect, you have uh, the keys here which show you uh, two octaves and uh, they're also velocity sensitive. So I can tap it softly. So that's a really nice feature to have something and so, you know, that's compact and wireless. Um, now the eight knobs here will change their function depending on the plugin. So for example, here with Phoenix, uh, the first knob here is frequency. Uh, well, this is all on the filter, so you filter frequency. Second one's filter resonance. And the third one is envelope amount. Now the fourth one's not assigned to anything, but you can actually edit that yourself using the, um, the Korg editor program that you can download. Now the bottom uh, four knobs are assigned to the uh, the uh, envelope, so ADSR, so attack, decay, sustain, and release. Okay. okay. You can also select which octave you want to play by by using the octave plus and minus buttons here. Yeah. 
There's also a sustain button, which uh, acts like a sustain pedal. So you can do things like, for example, The touchpad has different functionalities uh, depending on what you want to do. So currently it's in pitch and mod mode, which means pitch is on the x-axis and the modulation is on the y-axis. So if I play a note here. Now if you go to xy mode, this actually will map to the effects um, in whichever synth, well particularly in this synth. For example, this is the time, uh, sorry, the delay effect. You can hear it there. Now, touch scale gives you the same functionality as you would find in the Chaos uh, Chaosolator Pro or the um, Mini Chaosolator. So, you know, you have notes on the X axis and a filter on the Y axis. Now, the Nano Key Studio also has a built in arpeggiator, which you can select the different types of arps um, the, by using the shift and add button one. You can also select the range um, and the gate type for those uh, by using shift and the combination of the secondary functions on the pad button. So, have a look in the manual for that. Uh, also, chord pad. So when you hit chord pad, uh, it basically plays a few chords that are pre-programmed into the pads. Well, oh, actually, let's. Okay, so the Nano Key Studio also makes use of the backlit keys by having a built-in scale guide. So if I hit the scale guide button, I'll hold this up to the camera so you can see it. The scale guide button here. Oh, I put my hand, well, there we go. If I hit the scale guide button, you can see that some of the keys light up. So if I play those keys, it'll be in some specific scale. It's like, <laughs> like a pentatonic major scale. And if to select a different scale, I hit shift and then scale minus or scale plus. Hit that, now you can see it's changed. I can now play those keys. That, in that scale. It doesn't turn off, um, you know, the other keys. I can still play them so that, you know, if you um, want to play a few grace notes here and there, um, or not strictly stick to that key, you can do so. Now, the the key in which this is it is currently in C. Now, the scale and key is selected separately. So if I want to select a different key, for example, if I want to change this to, say, maybe uh, D minor, I hit shift and then the octave button now you can see that the c sharp is now lit if i hit that again now d now it maps the d minor scale to those backlit keys okay so again if i shift it back down to uh, c you can hear that So that's how you select different keys with the Nano Key Studio. Okay, so that's a short overview of the Nano Control Studio and the Nano Key Studio. Uh, and of course, because the Nano Key Studio and the Nano Control Studio are MIDI devices, you can record, uh, you know, any automation. You know, for example, volume automation here on the studio, and you know, any of the effect automation here on the uh, Nano Key Studio. So I'll just show you that quickly. Uh, using the Core Gadget app, which is currently linked up by Ableton Link uh, to Ableton Live. So, yeah, I'll record in a sequence um, into here and then record in some automation data um, on Phoenix and London, which uh, has some beatbox sounds. So, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, select Phoenix. Record arm. Oh. Okay. Just, just 
recorded song. in here. So there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, quick little video about the Korg Nano Control uh, Studio and Nano Key Studio. Uh, 